To get the dealer's cost, the list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates, click on the Car Cost Canada tab at any time during the video. <laughs> Traction Limited! You now it's hooking up! For me. Now it's hooking up! Woo! You me. Today's a very, very good day. Why is that? You might be asking yourself. Well, if you haven't noticed, I've got a beautiful day. Mix of sun and clouds. I've got 20 degrees outside, the birds are chirping, I've got some nice country roads, and uh, oh yeah, I'm in a $200,000 Mercedes AMG GTC. Life is good, especially when you got this engine. <laughs> oh, just a little bit of power. Four liter, twin turbo, bi-turbo as the Germans call it, V8 engine, 550 horsepower, 502 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah. That's pretty good. This thing weighs 3,800 pounds, which isn't the lightest in the segment, about 1,700 kilograms if you prefer your information that way. And it is a boatload of fun. Zero to 100 takes 3.7 seconds. It has a wicked, wicked launch control, but launch control really doesn't even accurately capture how savage this car is, how quick it is everywhere in the rev range. This V8 engine from Mercedes is an absolute marvel of engineering. Of course, it's the one man, one engine rule. There's one person who oversees the uh, construction of this particular unit. But even though it's turbocharged, this thing does not feel turbocharged. There is zero turbo lag. It's just thrust from 1000 RPM all the way to the red line at just about 7000 RPM. And of course, that sound, it sounds so good. Let me just give you a little... <laughs> It's like you're driving forward and you have someone sitting on the rear gate with a shotgun and they're just popping off as you roll down the road. It scares the crap out of people. I will say though, like other AMGs, it has a real finely tuned raspiness to it. And uh, what do I mean by that? Well, consider the uh, F-Type R or SVR, or maybe even a Mustang GT when you have the exhaust in track mode. Those are wild, unhinged sounds. This is more of a buttoned up guttural noise and uh, they're both great, just a little bit different. And if I had to pick between them, I don't know if I'd go for the SVR or the AMG, but I think this without a doubt is a little more mature, although still absolutely savage. Now, if you're confused by the naming convention of the GTs, then do not feel bad because I was and everybody I run into is. Starts with the GT, 135 grand here in Canada. 450-ish horsepower. Then we move up into the GTS, which is more power, more performance. Then we move to the GTC, which is yet again, more power and performance, but we get the addition of wide track and an all wheel steer system. Then we get to the GTR for people who are really crazy and want a track monster. That is yet again, the fastest, most aggressive GT on sale today. Now I haven't driven that one, but I have to think that just based on the price point, based on this sort of balance of performance and comfort that the GTC is probably the one for me. Uh, also, I love the fact that it's a drop top. Let's be honest, this type of car, you're not buying really to be practical. You're not driving it in the winter. So why the heck not have a convertible? It makes it way more fun. You get to smell the roses. You get to hear that beautiful V8 soundtrack. This is such a good looking car, especially with the top down. Tough to beat it. The interior of this thing is so nice. I mean, I love the design. This is a good spec. It's got this sort of fiery orange red looking uh, leather inserts. It's leather and Alcantara everywhere and it's like the highest quality stuff. The stitching is great. Everything's really soft to touch. Feels good in here. No cheap materials. We've got a nearly $7,000 Burmester audio upgrade, which is a sick sound system. Although frankly, most of the time you got the top down and you're listening to that four liter V8 anyways. Uh, everything in here, very contemporary, very stylish, such a, just a nice place to spend some time. The steering wheel, I think Mercedes does steering wheels really well. Some of the best in the industry. It's really thick and chunky and it's got the centering position because race car. It's also Alcantara wrapped, which is great. You will notice that there's no digital dashboard option in this car yet. You've got to think that'll be coming 
down the road, but until then we've got a traditional analog setup and it looks like a jet fighter. This thing, uh, I know I'm gushing right now, but it really does envelop you and make you feel like you're driving uh, not a sports car, but a jet, especially with this huge chunky center console that has a row of really nice aluminum buttons for all of your audio controls, your HVAC controls, and so on. We do have an air scarf system in here, so hot air will blow on your neck and shoulders, but no massage seats. If you really want something uh, that's a little bit softer with massaging seats and a couple of more tricks and features and luxurious stuff like that, you wanna check out the SL63, which is the other big fast Mercedes Roadster, but that one has a slightly more of a luxury cruising focus, whereas this is all about being pretty hardcore. Does it go around corners? Uh, yeah, it goes around corners. Oh, <laughs> so flat, so ridiculous. It feels so rewarding to drive and there's so much power to pull you out of that corner and because it's turbocharged, you get all that grunt nice and low. And is it stiff? Well, here's some train tracks. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit stiff, but you know what? I'm in Sport Plus mode. You can tone that down. We've got three stage dampers. We've got kind of a comfort mode a sport mode and a sport plus, or as I like to say, a firm, firmer and firmus. This is a pretty stiff, rattly car, unless you've got it dialed down into comfort, which I'm gonna do right now. But when you do that, yeah, it's a GT car now. You can cruise, you can bomb, you can go through the corners, you can do anything you want in this car, and it is so composed. Now, something else ha that helps with the handling is the fact that the GTC is a wide track and it has four wheel steering. That's right, at high speeds, the angle of the rear wheels will mimic the angle of the front wheels, giving you better stability. And then it's the opposite way when you're going slow. It's kind of like a forklift, so it'll go against the angle of the front wheels and tighten up that turning radius to make this beast a little bit easier to handle in the parking garage. Also helping, of course, big staggered tire setup. 265 section in the front, 305 section in the rear, 19 inch wheels in the front, 20 inch wheels in the rear. This has such a good stance. It looks so great, but it is all about the performance. And even though all this power is going to the rear wheels only, it does a pretty solid job of getting that power down. Now I will say though, like a lot of other cars like this, high horsepower numbers with rear wheel drive only, your acceleration is really traction limited. Something weird happens in this car. Up to about 100 kilometers per hour, you can feel the traction control bogging it down, just trying to sort itself out. As soon as you hit about 100, 110, the tires really start to gain some traction. And then it feels like the car has a momentary increase in acceleration. So if this thing had all wheel drive, it would be absolutely bonkers. But you know what, as is, I'm impressed with traction levels, even though, yeah, rear wheel drive is a little bit limiting. But I think once you get below four seconds, I mean, who's, who's counting? All that power is getting to the rear via a seven speed transaxle, which is pretty cool. So the transmission is not up here. The transmission is uh, right here behind me. And that means that it's combined with the differential, which in this car is a lovely electronically controlled limited slip diff, which means there's a computer doing some stuff to determine which wheel has the most amount of available traction to make sure that you're not just ripping one wheel as you pull out of a corner with your foot down. It is super, super effective. I love getting into a car with one of those, especially when you're dealing with this much ridiculous power. Now, in terms of drivability at low speeds, yeah, it's a dual clutch. It's a bit herky-jerky, kind of on and off the throttle, first and second gear around town. But once you get going, it's so remarkably fast. I mean, check this out. Second gear, it's, it shifts so fast, like it's a blink of an eye. And when you're really on it, you can get up and down the gear so quickly. Second. <laughs> it, of course, you got the shotgun sound out the back. This thing is so fun. The exhaust is so great. The transmission is so great. It handles so well. The engine sounds so good and it's so fast. I mean, it is impossible not to have a good time in this thing. Now this thing really doesn't feel like a 3,800 pound vehicle when you get it into the corners. It's so flat and it handles its girth so well. It generates tons of grip around corners. And when you have it in Sport Plus mode, it just, let you get a little bit of slip out the rear. Oh, and that's so engaging. And of course, we've got the dynamic dampers. We've got the, the E-diff in the back, this wonderful transmission. 
doing lots of electronic trickery, but it still manages to feel relatively natural. It doesn't feel synthetic. It doesn't feel computer generated. It's a rewarding car to drive. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it is rear wheel drive, so you still have to pay attention. You've got to drive this thing. You can't just put your foot to the floor and expect to get out of a corner. So it does harken back to an older age while doing so in with remarkably effective technology. It's such a great balance and that's why I've enjoyed driving this car so much. And of course then there's <laughs> there's always that. If you get bored thinking about e-diffs and gigantic brakes, you can always just pop it down a few gears, put your foot to the floor. It doesn't get much better than that. And we're coming into a corner here. Downshift, downshift, downshift. About 60 kilometers an hour down to 40, and this thing is just stuck absolutely stuck. And you hear how fast those shifts are. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. The AMG GT series is often viewed as a direct competitor to a vehicle like the Porsche 911. Like that Porsche, there's an attention to detail here, inside and out, that makes this not only astonishingly capable, but very livable and luxurious at the same time. But to me, the AMG GTC has a certain show-stopping quality only replicated by the rarest and most expensive 911s. This is more exotic. It's not as common. And while the Porsche may be the benchmark everyday track car, this looks much more appropriate parked in front of the Four Seasons. And more important than all of that, it's hard for me to find fault in the exhilarating way that it all comes together on the road. This is a complete package and an excellent roadster from the fine people at AMG. Car Cost Canada provides the dealer cost, a list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. The link is in the description below.